Hey everybody, it's me. Uh, today is Friday in Thailand and um, had my surgery. It's all over with, except now I'm doing a lot of aftercare. My surgery was on Tuesday and today's Friday, so if you don't count the day of my surgery, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this is my third day being post-op. And um, it's been an interesting ride. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one way to put it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, my energy's way up today. I, um, I, for the last couple of days, it's been, I've been in not a lot of pain, but in pretty constant pain. So it's like when you hurt a little bit for 48 hours straight, it really takes a lot out of you. And um, so now I'm a little more prepared for what it's going to be like to be like in my 70s and 80s. Constant pain, I guess, is what I have to look forward to. We all do. Anyway, um, the surgery. Let me tell you about the surgery. So um, I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but you know, Monday night I checked into the hospital and I had a consultation with a psychiatrist. Um, I had to bring all my psychiatric letters from the states, and um, I had to talk to a psychiatrist here. I talked with my anesthesiologist. Um, we looked at sort of my health, and I had had a bunch of tests run. So we talked about what the results of those tests could mean, and basically the the end result was I'm in pretty good health, and um, there might have been a couple of anomalies in. Um, you know, just a couple things to look out for, but nothing that turned out to be a big problem. Um, when the door to my room is right over there, and at 8.30 on Tuesday morning, when I saw that, that, that gurney, I guess it is, the, the bed roll up, um, and I knew that I was going to go lay on that thing and be wheeled into the operating theater, I got a little verklempt. <laughs> Um, I got a little, uh, a little overwhelmed and I started to cry a little bit and, um, but you know, my mom and I said a prayer and, um, I got on that thing and I just tried to breathe and just watch the ceiling as I was moving. I wasn't paying any attention to where I was going. Um, just trying to breathe and I could feel that my heart was racing. So I was trying to calm myself down because, you know, they want your heartbeat to be steady when you're being cut open. So I was really being conscious about that. You can see that this is my IV. My IV is giving me a lot of fluids um, and it's uh, it's been in there. They put it in when they started the operation. I was conscious. So we got into the operating theater and I was looking around and I saw these big lights kind of, you know, where my, like above where my legs were going to be. And I kind of started to go, oh my God, this is going to, they're going to cut into me right now. Like this is going to happen right now. And, um, so I started to get a little scared. Um, but you know, it's a big deal. Like who cares if you get scared? Like. The important thing is that I didn't get so scared that I said, stop, I don't want to do this. <laughs> because like, I really knew that I wanted it. Um, so I got onto the bed, uh, the operating table, and um, they had, um, like the position that I was in was actually very uncomfortable. Um, the way they have it is they have these long boards so I'm gonna put my arm through this thing here, but it's like both of my arms were outstretched this entire time and I was lying here like this. And it's a five hour operation to have your arms out here like this. So that was really like when I woke up, um, my left hand, like from my elbow up, my left hand was a little bit numb. And right now when I wiggle it, even three days later, it's still a little bit numb on these two fingers. So I've been just trying to squeeze it and trying to flex my arm because at one point my elbow was really weak. So if I tried to reach for something, I couldn't hold it in this position. My arm would just fall like that. It's like I had no muscle control. Um, 
And the same with my leg, like my leg, my left leg, so my left arm and my left leg, <laughs> left leg, were, um, they were pretty numb. And uh, so I told the doctors and they kind of checked me out to make sure that I didn't have a, a blood clot that got stuck in there because that can cause major problems, like that could kill me if there was a blood clot in there. But they checked it and, um, you know, I could move my leg and it didn't hurt to move my leg, so um, they felt like it was okay and, you know, they sort of felt around in there. So the good news is that I'm fine. Um, the surgery was successful. Um, there, I was not told that there were any complications. Um, I have a vagina, my friends. I have a vagina. <laughs> and uh, right now it's full of cotton. <laughs> so, so basically I woke up, um, let me just kind of get back to where I was. So I was laying there and they put my arms out and they gave me a little something, they put my IV in and they gave me a little something to calm me down and I could just sort of feel that starting to take, take effect. Um, still very conscious, but just a little bit tingly and a little bit relaxed. And I sat with the anesthesiologist, she sat next to me and we started talking just about things. And, and I asked, um, I asked, oh, are you gonna play any music, you know, during the operation? Cause I know that that's what doctors do or surgeons, they need something to, something in the air. And they're like, yeah, whatever is on the radio, we'll listen to that. So I said, okay, but if you play any American country music, you're gonna wake me up because I can't stand that stuff. <laughs> so they they promised they wouldn't. And um, and then the doc, Dr. Saporn came in and just sort of chatted with me for a brief second. He asked if I was okay. He asked how how I was doing. He told me it was gonna be five hours long. Um, and then. The anesthesiologist was just about to, she said to me, okay, now I'm gonna put you to sleep. So if there's anything you wanna say before you go to sleep and we start the operation, say something now. And I remember laying there, it must've taken like two seconds, but it felt like two minutes. I was laying there trying to think of something to say and all the surgeons were sort of hovering around me. So I just saw like all these people like looking, they, were like, they weren't doing anything. They were just standing and looking at me and listening. And I said, just thank you for this. This is the most important thing in my life right now. And I can't express how much it means to me to be able to do this or to have this done. So thank you. And they kind of nodded their heads. And then the next thing I knew, <laughs> I was sort of like, I was the next thing I knew I was in a different place I was in the recovery room and I was laying there and I was just sort of like opening my eyes a little bit and going you know what the hell is going on thinking to myself like what what's going on and I had to pee really bad but the anesthesiologist had told me that usually I mean they put a catheter up in there in my urethra so um uh, it, I was told that it's a common reaction when you first wake up. You feel like you have to pee really bad. So it was definitely true for me. I had to pee. But um, I also sort of knew that in the back of my head and they said, okay, you know, just go, just go. So I remember just laying there and trying to relax and, uh, and I have, you know, I have a urine bag that's connected to connected to my bed like this is a this is a bed post thing and there's a, a urine bag hooked up down there and that's that's connected to my urethra so whenever I have to pee it's like I don't I don't have to push or I don't have to squeeze it just comes out and uh, and the nurses come by and they change it about about two or three times a day so I guess I'm peeing a lot but I wouldn't know it I can't feel it um, I'm trying to think of like what other good detailed information I can give you that's not going to gross you out too much. Um, I mean, I can feel the packing inside me. Um, and if I sort of wiggle my hips a little bit, I can feel it moving around. 
Um, and it's, it's an interesting feeling. It's really interesting. And it's, of all the times that I've imagined having a vagina and what it might feel like, it's still a little bit different. It's like, I feel like I, I feel like I guessed about 75% right. <laughs> um, but I still don't know what it's going to be like after they take out all the packing and, and after that I start to dilate. So, um, and I still haven't seen my vagina yet because there's a lot of bandages over it. And I guess part of the procedure that Saporn does is, is it actually pulls down a lot of the stomach muscles to, or a lot of the skin there. He kind of, it's like he makes, I, I, I saw a video on this a long time ago, so I can't explain it very well. But you know, they do all the, they do all the stuff and they do all the stitching and the reconfiguring and um, then they sew everything up and, um, and then they like, they pull down um, like the abdomen like they pull my abdomen lower um, because I guess my my urethra now is not the same place that my urethra was when I had a penis. It's like a little bit lower down, down around my crotch, uh, down under my in between my legs. Um, so for the first for the first day, I was sleeping for I was sleeping in like two hour. Like every two hours I was sleeping and then the nurses would come in and they would check my blood pressure and they would check my pulse and they would check my bags and they would check my IV. Um, they did that every two hours so I couldn't get a lot of long-term rest that first day. It was just kind of two hours at a time and then being disturbed and um, I couldn't really roll over to my side. It just hurt too much. Um, but that first day my IV had morphine in it, so I was getting a little trip of morphine constantly. And I, I just remember being, like, I remember a lot of the day, but it's very groggy, so... That night, I fell asleep around 10 o'clock, or 11 o'clock maybe. And there was a great big thunderstorm outside, so there was a crash of lightning um, and thunder that happened at about 4.30 in the morning and it was so loud I could swear that it was just right in the street. It was like, ah, uh, it was so loud it woke me up and I couldn't fall back to sleep after that. So I pretty much stayed awake from, from 4.30 and then eventually, you know, they brought breakfast in at about 7 and the doctor came in to check on me at 8.30 and, uh, And then just tried to sleep on and off. I, actually, that first... Okay. So the day of my surgery was day zero. And that was when I had all the morphine. The day after that was day one. So that was Wednesday. And that day, I felt like I was pretty conscious all day. And it was totally annoying because I had been prepared that I was going to be you know, drugged up enough that I was just going to be sort of not remembering anything. But like, I really remember a lot of that day and, and, and there was a lot of swelling. The doctor said that, that today, that, that Tuesday was, sorry, day one, Wednesday, was going to be a lot of swelling down there. So it was going to be the m more painful. And it was like, I felt pain around my, around my catheter. And I just felt pain in general down there. And I mean, if I tried, to, I could like lean over to my side a little bit. I could lift my hips up a little bit, but you know, any, any large motion was really painful. And I remember just being so pissed off because <laughs> I just wanted to sleep. I wanted to not remember this really difficult day. And it was like, I was completely awake and alert. So I asked for morphine in the afternoon I asked they gave me a little shot and all the rest of the time I had just been taking oral painkillers which is not morphine it's not as strong but I don't really like morphine like I don't want to take a lot of it so I felt okay with it um, and that brings us to day two which was yesterday and day three which is today 
and these things have been much better. Um, I don't, I don't really have that much pain. Um, I have a little bit of discomfort, mostly around my catheter, and you know I can roll over so I can sort of twist my body. I can do like this kind of thing, and I can be up on my side. Ooh, that kind of hurts a little bit though. I have to be careful with my legs how I, like if I hold my legs too far apart, then it, it pulls on the wound. Um, so I try to stay on my back. I, uh, I think I'm more comfortable on my back anyway. Um, and I've just been eating little bits of food and, you know, some eggs and some rice. And I tried some chicken curry last night and it was so spicy. I never had curry so spicy in my life. I mean, now I know why all my friends in Seattle that are from these, you know, the countries in this part of the world, I know why they're always asking for six stars uh, in their pad thai or in their curry because it's just not hot there like it is in Thailand. Um, and yeah, I've been chatting with some of my friends online today mostly because I couldn't really I couldn't really sit and use the computer yesterday, I was just bleh, so, um, and it was hard to hold my arms up in the air, but today I feel a lot stronger, and, um, I've been playing some games on my computer and on my DS, um, and now there's a nurse coming in, so I'll say goodbye for now. Hello. See you soon.